everybody and welcome to another edition of Let's Play, uh, what is it, Tecmo Super Bowl Rasmussen Memorial Cup Edition. Today we're going to be having the Denver Broncos controlled by the Joneser against the Minnesota Vikings. I've been seeing a lot of the Vikings lately as they played San Diego in the last game. They're actually not a very good team. Uh, they have a very trick play heavy playbook that can be exploited by the right type of player. But I would like to add that our very own Glenn O'Reilly and his Chicago Bears were beat by them by an embarrassing sum of 7-45. to 45. And then also, this, this is the team that beat him with the last minute flea flicker after the accidental onside kick. So, you know, they could have success here. Oh, Terry Allen with the fake reverse. But it's only good for a two-yard gain. Yeah, once you get down that full pitch-out thing, you'll be fine. No, I mean, that, it's still could have been a lot worse. Oof! And Terry Allen is not going to be getting any yards out of that one. Third down, seven to go. Kind of a couple of somewhat ineffectual run plays there. And there he goes back to pass. Rich Gannon, he's on the run. And I have no idea what Solens was doing while following him. A very drunken scamper. Uh, which looked like a sure sack there. Well, let's see what he does this time. Oh, going to go up the gut with Roger Craig. We'll get seven yards. He's doing a bit better than Allen has thus far against his defense. Oof. And Mrs. Craig again. No, no, third and one. The well, Vikings <coughs> offense certainly not explosive at this point. Uh, but still, managing to move the sticks. Oh, and the dive play gets him the first down. One embarrassing animation later, and we've got a first down, but Terry Allen is Caucasian and hurt. And you see him lying on the field, he's a white guy. I think that's... I think they had that in the in the original game, actually. And maybe they just kept it because it's funny. But in any case, that could be a big loss for the uh, Minnesota Vikings because Terry Allen, definitely one of the strong parts of that uh, offensive, uh, offensive uh, repertoire. You gotta quit running like that. You're like way slowing down your pass rush. Run. Yeah, you don't zigzag in. Remember, shortest short distance between any two points is a straight line. There you go. Oh. I should have went for that. Uh, go for the diving tackle. No, it's A or B when you're close enough to the guy. <coughs> Usually I press them both at once. And there's the punt by uh, Newsom there. I don't know his first name, and I, yeah, usually don't. Go ahead and down it. Okay. <laughs> Jeez. Pick one of the two buttons. <laughs> All right. So the Broncos are going to take over from the 20 there after a punt. Broncos defense played very well against the uh, Vikings there. Let's see if offensively they can get something going. Lewis only gets a two-yard gain up the gut there. Oh, always already going out of the gun. It is a call play, and he takes a 12-yard loss on the sack from Senor Carlos Jenkins. And uh, oh, is this third? Yeah, he run up the gut. Oh man, I mean, did you notice that you have been tackled twice? All right, looks like a three and out for the Broncos on fourth and 14. As uh, Jones somehow forgot that he was uh, on fourth down or on third down. It was a pretty good punt, yep. Yeah, but I mean, you were punting. Were you out of your own end zone or damn near out of your own end zone? <coughs> no. Well, in any case, that was really quick. Uh, the speed at which the uh, Broncos have surrendered the ball. Oof! 
Oh, Henderson still gets hit for a loss there. And that might be something that's going to go ahead and swing the pendulum of this game in favor of the Denver Broncos. The loss of Terry Allen, pretty big loss. Oh, but no, Henderson actually, strong run there. Yep, strong run from uh, Henderson there, coming around the corner. Which was surprising because it seemed like that play was blown, but... Solens once again decides to zigzag for no reason whatsoever. And he <laughs> Yeah, I don't know why he didn't tackle him. You're right there. Okay. Well, a couple of 10 yard runs, and uh, it looks like the Minnesota Vikings are moving that ball, even without their uh, premier back. Oh! Rich Gannon gets it out quick, but it's an incomplete pass. I've noticed the pass rush has really been developing. With you didn't. Ooh, Anthony Carter. He doesn't drop too many passes, folks. Oh, but he gets stopped at the one. Well, most of them aren't really a threat. But one yard, I mean, one yard's pretty easy to gain. So there on the one yard line, he's going to go up the gut. Oh, but Roger Craig will get stuffed for a one yard loss. Well, they'll get a couple more tries at it. Even in a call play, they might have a chance of making it in. Oh, oh, the dive play. Well, we get her on touchdown. So Keith Anderson, so I finally learned his first name. Fod Revez, auto Fod with the kick. And that's going to put the Vikes up 7 0. And this is an important game for the Broncos. They need to win this. They're 4 3 and 1. Remember, they're 4 3 and 1 because they refused to kick the field goal that one time. <laughs> Otherwise, they'd be 5 and 3. But at 4 3 and 1. You know, in a pretty competitive division. To Tillman, Tillman, to the 45, to the 40, to the 38, fumble. And Barry's on the return. He'll get to the uh, 48 there. A good pass play, but uh, Lady Luck not riding upon the shoulders of uh, the Broncos today. Oh, boom, eight yard loss. <laughs> On, was that the reverse or the fake reverse? Well, which one did you pick? Okay, I'll pretend like I didn't hear that. Oh, and on the real reverse, it's a loss to nine. Third down and 26. This is an awful long way to try to score from or to get a first down. But Rich Gannon decides uh, to uh, do the play action, and he gets sacked on a call play. And fourth down and 31, they're probably going to punt. So, the damage will be mostly undone. Well, he's going to get Newsom gets the punt off. And it will travel down to the, <coughs> the 24 and be stopped at the 27. So, the Denver Broncos have the ball and they have about two minutes to go ahead and try to score here. For Provided they don't forget what uh, down it is, there probably could be most. Oh, and forget about it. You know, from that nice pass earlier, I thought. Uh, <laughs> I well, I don't know what to think anymore. Let's just let's just see what happens. Second down and ten. Elway out of the gun. He's got nobody open, but he was under big time pressure. Tillman's still going to make a jumping reception. And they could move the ball down the field there, but they've only got a minute to do it. Are you going to go up the gut with a minute left? Second down and nine to go. Out of the gun again, his favorite shotgun play. Shannon Sharp, who is heavily covered, you know, he, he was covered the whole time. Like, 
There was no time he wasn't covered. In any case... <laughs> well, if you're lucky, maybe you'll get a safety here on one of their stupid reverse plays. Or they'll get big yardage off it, one or the other. Oh, no, it's only a one-yard gain. Look at all that trouble for a one-yard gain, huh? <laughs> That's why I never liked those plays. Capitalize on what? Alright, here we go. Oh, there's my favorite band. Emote. Oh, I can't remember the name I gave them. Based on the fact that two of the people don't move. Immobilescence, that's it. Immobilescence. Based upon the fact that the saxophone player and the keyboardist do not move at any time. Only the, the female lead singer does. Which is fine, you know, I mean, every band's got their gimmick. Theirs is that they're, uh, you know, people don't move. So, I mean, cool, that's a gimmick. You can go with that. I think it might suffer, you know, their play might suffer because of that. Not if you do it right, like that. All right, he's the midfield after the 16-yard gain off a nice, neat, safe pass, which is not something you're generally going to see here out of the Broncos. Oh, I should have waited. That would have been a touchdown. Although it's probably safer to not wait with the fly pattern as far as accuracy, but if he'd have waited. Yeah, this is the only play you have with this formation, so I know what it is. Apparently, they, they like to pick that play. They're really scared of you going up the gut with Lewis. Oh, up the gut with Bernstein. So it's, it's third down, in case you weren't aware. Because I know last time that was a problem. Oh, oh, crap. Now you're going to die. Oh, no. Tillman. Interception. No, that's what he's got to hope for. Maybe. Well, let's check it out. Pitch out. No. No, there goes Keith Henderson. And there's not going to be any safeties on that play. And I, I don't know what the... I don't know what the Broncos have to do here. Because uh, offensively, they're just not getting it done. Maddox is your backup. When <laughs> nobody's your backup, you generally wouldn't have Maddox in. <laughs> I don't think it's always fault. But anyway, uh, the Broncos defense is playing very well. Maybe. Hard to tell, really. Oh, flea flicker. That's the one that... Oh, yeah. Well, okay. Dennis Smith. One of the great safeties in the secondary for your uh, Denver Broncos. And we'll have to see... Uh... Uh, why do you... Like... <laughs> I mean... He was never open. He was never at any... You had your fullback open, actually. Okay, well, in any case, I'm going to stop crying for the uh, for the Broncos. Yeah, whatever. Jeez. That was a lucky deal, though, because you did have an open guy. All right, forget it. All right. Yeah. Everybody wants to go straight up the gut on third. Oh, he's going to go for it on fourth and two. Oh, we'll have to see. Pressure cooker is on. It's kind of been handed good field position. Oh my didn't, didn't I don't even think he hit the right button. I guess, but you know. You didn't even know he was grabbing you until it was too late, I guess. Alright, so it looks like the Broncos could have their goose pretty well cooked. We'll have to see what happens here. They've been handed plenty of <coughs> opportunities with good field position. 
but the offense just keeps turning the ball over. But the defense is trying to... Oh, but Anthony Carter... Oh, Anthony Carter hits the first down, and if they hit a field goal, this game could be out of reach. And I would say, is out of reach. Yep, another interception. Uh, but I don't. We'll have to see if the Broncos can get some offense going, because they have not. It reminds me very much of watching an Eagles game. Okay, well, a nice safe run up the gut for four yards by Lewis. It's possible that the Broncos could tie the game again. <laughs> well, he gets the pass off before the sack. Oh. Uh, I think you should be happy, like, with a call play that you, you threw an incompletion. Yeah. It beats the hell out of... Ah, oh, you should have waited. Oh well. Okay. And Tillman gets, he doesn't fumble that time, and now they're down to the 36. Nice jumping catch by Tillman there. And, and he could certainly tie up the game right here. We'll have to see. I'm getting a little excited, folks, to be honest with you. Oh! Lewis sidesteps the tackle there, gets seven yards. And he inches closer and closer to that end zone. Two minutes remaining in the game. And nice safe up the gut play. And he gets the first down, despite the fact that he rammed into his line a few times. In any case, we're now at the 22-yard line. Oh, always out of the gun. He's got to get... He does not get rid of it in time. And takes a 13... Yard sack, so this is going to put him way the hell back there and pretty much force passes. Uh, too early. Too early. Got to wait. Yeah. Out of the gun, again. His favorite pass play of all time. Oh! Oh! Oh, just out of reach. But he did get... I'll give him credit. He noticed when he was about to get sacked. He got no choice. He'll have to go for it. I can't believe that. That was so awesome. Yeah. Oh, crap. And that's pretty much game, folks. I got 56 seconds left. It is pi it, it, the clock stop. I'm at an incomplete pass. Uh, it's possible there will be a fumble or an interception. That's really the only hope that the Broncos have at this point. I mean, really, every drive they've had has ended in disaster of some sort. Oh, there's an interception, and he runs out of bounds immediately, and basically gets 45 seconds to score a touchdown. Oh, this all comes down to here, uh, the end right now. He's got Tillman. He's going to throw it deep. He waits. Oh, overthrows. And I don't know what's wrong with Elway. I have to. Yeah, it's an, inc it's an incomplete pass. All right, he has. T that play didn't take that long, so he's got 27 seconds. Possibly time for two more plays. <laughs> you had a guy. Okay, that's the last play of the game. Yeah. I don't know why you did that. You had a guy open deep. Okay, well, anyway. Denver comes out on the losing end, dropping to 4-4 four and four with one tie in a very sloppy game uh, offensively. It was offensively sloppy, you might say. And that's going to have a big effect. Uh, the Denver's still in second place in their division. But as far as the wild card hunt goes, well, it puts them behind Pittsburgh for sure. And ties them with Miami. So they're still in the hunt, but not a very impressive performance. For the Vikings, well, that puts them, uh, they could be tied with the Bears, provided the Bears win the next game, which they are not favored to do. They play San Diego. All right.
Thanks, folks, for tuning in. Next, we're going to have Buffalo. Who's Buffalo playing? Buffalo's going to be playing Pittsburgh. That'll be an interesting game. All right, folks, until next time, bye-bye.